Hey everybody, ABC 10 meteorologist Brendan Minchef with an update on La Nina. Well, it's not here yet, but it is likely just around the corner. And of course, it's the time of year where summer's not quite over yet. It's not quite fall. It's hot outside, but we got pumpkin spice lattes in our hands. And so we're kind of starting to think a little bit about the rainy season. When is it going to rain again? Will it be a rainy winter? Is there good news on the horizon or maybe some sour news? Well, we, we can't answer all those questions, but we can do a little bit of a look ahead. We'll start with climatology. When does the rain return? Well, our first our average first date with a quarter of an inch of rain in Sacramento, that's on October 25th. So we're still uh, more than a month away from that, almost two months away from our average first day with a quarter of an quarter of an inch of rain. But of course, that's not a real rainy day. A real rainy day is when we start talking about an inch of rain or more. While our average first day with at least an inch of rain, that doesn't happen until the middle of December, December 16th. So we are still quite a ways away from those real rainy days. Of course, we would expect that. We know December, January, February are on average the rainiest months in Sacramento. So we would expect to see that number a little bit down the road, but we're not that far from that first quarter inch day. And of course, we do usually see some showers in the valley by the time we get towards late September, or early October. Uh, but this is more of a conversation about what can we expect this winter? Are there any signs, any clues as to what the winter is looking like? And as I think a lot of us are familiar with, La Nina or El Nino, that's kind of the primary driver when we start talking about seasonal look aheads, especially as it relates to winter. So here's where we're at as of August 28th in terms of sea surface temperature anomalies. You see a lot of blue across the equatorial Pacific and in the Nino 3.4 region. Well, we are negative. It's 0.83 degrees Celsius below normal. That's that anomaly, right? A little below coming up on a degree uh, Celsius cooler than usual. That's indicative of a weak La Nina starting to develop. And there's some other signs we can look at as well. And uh, one of those is what does the undersea uh, temperature look like? Are we seeing pockets of cold water underneath the equatorial Pacific and then will eventually rise up off the coast of South America? Yes, we are. We are seeing colder than normal water uh, underneath that sea surface. And the way that it works, it just kind of cycles, right? These are uh, these waves all propagate off to the west, but then underneath of these waves, literally as you go 100 meters, 200 meters, 300 to 500 meters below the surface, you can see the temperatures. We've got a ton of buoys out here, and we're seeing below normal temperatures that will upwell off the coast of South America uh, in a month to two months' time. So that is indicative of a building La Nina. And so when we look at those models, that's what we see. But it's a weaker one. It's not a real strong La Nina, and honestly, it doesn't last all that long. So here's where we are today, coming up at the end of August, start of September, still in those neutral conditions, but as we head through the fall months, we're going to see those temperatures drop even more, those sea surface temperatures drop, and that is going to bring us into a weak La Nina. That's what the models are saying as we head in towards about November, December time frame, and we'll stay that way through about January before before we start to shift back into more of a neutral pattern for the second half of the rainy season. So it's not looking to be a real strong La Nina that develops. Before we talk more about the differences between a weak La Nina and a strong La Nina, let's refresh ourselves on what the difference between El Nino and La Nina is is because there are some differences and it means different things generally for weather on the West Coast and of course here in Northern California. So we're going to run through the textbook animations here. When it's neutral conditions, you got your trade winds right pushing, like we said, pushing that water off to the West through the equatorial Pacific. Normally you get some cooler water off the coast of South America, some warmer water that pools up in the central Pacific and then off into Oceania. That's a neutral pattern, but typically we don't stay neutral for long. We're usually either in El Nino or La Nina. These patterns can last anywhere from about six months to 18 months, and then they'll flip back. They are patterns. In fact, they're oscillations because we don't stay in one pattern forever. It switches back and forth. This is what El Nino looks like. 
This is not where we're at today. This is just what the textbook looks like. We have weaker trade winds, which means we can get some winds that are actually pushing from west to east, and that helps to see these warmer waters across the equatorial Pacific. That cooler water, there's not as much of it. We're not getting that underwater or transport of the cooler, uh, cooler water, and so we get these warmer temperatures, uh, warmer sea surface temperatures, all the way back to the coast of South America. Well, that's all well and good. What does that mean for weather? Well, again, in a textbook setup, generally it means for the southern half of California, wetter than normal conditions in the wintertime, warmer than normal conditions across much of the upper Great Plains, the upper Pacific Northwest, and drier and warmer than normal across the Midwest because that polar jet typically stays up into Canada and just cuts across New England. It doesn't dip real low, bringing those pattern changes in the wintertime. So El Nino we normally think of El Nino as wetter for us here in California. Certainly for Southern California, those numbers are true. For us here in the capital region, we kind of sit in the middle of wetter and drier. So it, it can be a little bit of a toss up, but it's also true. If you think to some of the mega flood stories that we've done here at ABC 10, or if you've done some mega flood research on your own, uh, that when we talk about the potential for the largest flood events to happen in California, they typically would require an El Nino setup. So the, the kind of thinking, right, that El Nino means wetter, there is some truth to that, but it's not always the same. Every setup is different. Here is where we are today, or at least what we're headed towards. That would be La Nina. We've got some stronger trade winds, which means that cooler water. We have more upwelling, a lot more cooler water out across the equatorial Pacific, including off the coast of South America. That changes our pattern up here, not just in California, but across North America. Drier than normal conditions, usually, again, this is the textbook setup, usually drier than normal conditions across not only Southern California, but really the southern half of the United States. Typically warmer than normal across the southeast and the Great Plains and the Midwest, although a little wetter than normal across the Midwest. So that's warm and wet as opposed to cooler and drier in an El Nino setup. With La Nina, typically wetter across the Pacific Northwest. And again, you see Sacramento in the capital region just kind of right on the line between wetter and drier. And of course, it's the opposite for El Nino, but still Sacramento right on that line as we saw. So for Sacramento, it really depends. There is no one size fits all, whether La Nina will be wet or La Nina will be dry. We can break those numbers down a little bit, first of all, by climate districts, but then also as to whether we see a weak La Nina, moderate La Nina, or a strong La Nina. So here's where we're at with this graphic. This is precipitation averages for La Nina years. For all La Nina, California as a whole typically ends up with about 97% of an average winter's precipitation. During a weak La Nina, though, which is, seems to be what we're moving into, notice it's 101% of average, so right about where we'd expect to be. It's not way above normal, right? It's not like we're talking 110% of average, but it is 101, so we're right there where we'd expect to be. With those moderate La Ninas, those are typically, for California as a whole, the driest type of La Nina, according to the numbers. A strong La Nina gets us to 96% of average, so still pretty close. Of course, with El Nino, we typically see wetter than normal winters. Not every year, but it, it, we get our wettest winters typically during El Nino events. But this is what I mean by I said one size doesn't fit all when it comes to uh, El Nino and La Nina events. The weak La Nina winter of 2016-17, California saw 156% of average. Sorry, that number's for the Sacramento Valley. Sacramento Valley specifically saw 156% of average precipitation. During that weak La Nina, similarly, 2005 to 6, 138% of average precipitation. Most recently, 2022 to 2023, weak La Nina, 127% of an average winter's precipitation. That was a drought busting winter. So was that one. So two of our most recent drought busting winters happened during weak La Nina events. Of course, it can go the other direction. 2017-18, one winter following that drought busting winter, Sacramento Valley only saw 76% of an average winter's precipitation.
As we look at the map of California here, we can look at some other districts. So this is uh, on average, right, percent of normal during a week La Nina. 98% for the Sacramento Valley, 101% for the San Joaquin Valley. Remember with La Nina, northern part of California, far northern California, typically sees an at or above uh, normal winter in terms of precipitation. But for Southern California, it's usually drier and the numbers are very clear about that. Along the Southern California coast, just 81% of normal precipitation during a week La Nina, 91% for the deserts, 95% for places like Death Valley and the eastern slope of the Southern Sierra. So there's a very clear clear indicator that for Southern California, weak La Nina events are typically much drier than normal. Again, just 81% along the Southern California coast. For Northern California, though, we're much closer to 100. And even though Sacramento Valley at 98%, Bay Area at about 94%, even though it is a little below normal, it's not significantly below normal. And I will just reiterate one more time. We can get a lot of variability, even in similar setups, right? These were all weak La Nina winters, but all of them produced different amounts of average precipitation. And it's not just those five. Those are just five that I've highlighted. So not every El Nino La Nina is the same. You can get a very wet El Nino. You can get a very dry La Nina and vice versa. But there's also other patterns that influence whether or not we see rain and snow and wet winters and whatnot across the West Coast. And one of those that we look at is the Pacific North American pattern. A few minutes ago, I said El Nino La Nina can last six to about 18 months. This pattern lasts typically a couple of weeks at most before it'll move around. Basically, what the PNA, the Pacific North American pattern, tells us is if we're in an, a, a pattern where we're going to likely be immediately drier or immediately wetter because it is a measure of whether or not there's high pressure, high pressure right off of the coast. So in a positive PNA setup, you have high pressure sitting right over the West Coast, right over California, and the low pressures in the Gulf of Alaska. So this is a drier and warmer a pattern for us. That's what the PNA is indicating when it's positive because that storm door is closed. But when we get a negative PNA, that means high pressures up in the Gulf of Alaska and that storm door is open, allowing for systems to either drop down, such as maybe an inside slider or for an atmospheric river to push into Northern California. So again, negative PNA, wetter and cooler. So even in a winter, where it can be La Nina, it can be drier overall. The PNA is a better indicator of whether the weather we're about to see is going to be cooler and wetter or warmer and drier. And that's something that we will track a lot as we head through the winter time. Now, the question on everybody's mind, are we looking at a wetter uh, winter, a drier winter, warmer, cooler? We can look at the seasonal climate models. I will be honest with you and say I remember looking at these for the winter of 2022-2023. As we talked about, that was an exceptionally wet winter, and it was in a weak La Nina to a neutral pattern. The climate models, the seasonal climate models, completely busted. They did not handle it at all. They did not pick up on the uh, anomalously wet winter that we had. When we were looking at these models in September and October, it, again, it got December, January, February wrong. So we can look at these, but remember, you got to take it with a grain of salt because things change. And this is meant to be kind of an overarching look and not whether maybe just a few weeks in December or maybe a few days in December will be very wet. This is kind of a seasonal outlook. So we're going to look at this, but this is it's hard to call it a forecast because it's just kind of peering into the future. That being said. We'll look at the NMME, that's the North American Multi-Model Ensemble, in terms of temperature anomaly. This is for the three-month period of November, December, and January. Warmer across the United States, including the desert southwest and the west coast. We can also look at the European version of the same model in terms of temperature anomaly. It shows the same thing. Warmer across the desert southwest and the west coast, but honestly, across the United States. We can look at this for rainfall. As you might expect, if things are indic indicative of being warmer, they might also indicate that things are going to be drier. That's what we see from the NMME for the precipitation anomaly, drier across the U.S. West and the much of the Mid-Atlantic and the Southeast. Wetter, though, for parts of the Pacific Northwest into the Canadian prairies and then also the Midwest. That's pretty typical of La Nina. Doesn't look that different from the textbook version of La Nina that we were looking at just a few minutes ago. And a similar pattern is seen on the European precip anomaly map. 
drier across much of the U.S. West. The Pacific Northwest seeing a little bit more rain. Same across the Canadian prairies, but then drier across the southeast, up into the mid-Atlantic, and wetter in parts of the northeast and the upper Midwest. We're going to leave it at that in terms of looking into the winter because again, things can change so much. Those models come out every single month. We can look at these again in September and October, November, and honestly, they might say something different every time we look at them. They're just meant to be kind of glances into the future. Is the overall setup looking to be significantly wetter, significantly drier? Right now, things do look warmer and drier, but that can change. And that doesn't mean, uh, remember that was for uh, November, December, and January. That doesn't mean February and March won't come in exceptionally wet. Kind of like what we just had this past winter where January was dry as a bone and then February comes in and was wetter than normal. So again, that's just kind of a glance. We are still in late summer, everybody, even though again, we are kind of sipping on our fall coffees. We are not there in terms of the weather pattern. It is still very much summer. It is going to be uh, a hot start to September. So we're just not there yet, but we will continue to do these kind of seasonal outlooks. We'll continue to look ahead towards the winter, continue to update you on the developing La Nina out across the equatorial Pacific. And you can find all those updates on ABC 10 plus. It's a free streaming app. You can download it wherever you stream. We've got a weather playlist. You can find videos just like this one. You can find extended forecasts and weather explainers as well as weather, fire and climate specials. That's all on the weather playlist on the ABC 10 plus app. Thanks for watching.